I'm here in Sydney's Central Station and did you know that this is actually the third incarnation of Central Station? The first was built a little bit further south in Redfern along Cleveland Street in 1855 and itself replaced in 1874 by a second station in the same location. Later the line was extended north past Cleveland Street and over Devonshire Street to Central Station's current location here alongside Eddy Avenue. Devonshire Street underneath the tracks was closed off to cars leading to the current Devonshire Street pedestrian tunnel and if you are to take that tunnel west out to Regent Street you will find the last remaining part of the old central station. I'm here at Mortuary Station, the last remaining part of the Rookwood Cemetery line that was built in 1864 in order to service Rookwood Cemetery, located next to Lidcombe Station in Sydney's west. Originally a spur line, trains would depart from the city and stop at stations along the way before terminating at one of the four stations on the sprawling 268 hectare site that was Rookwood Cemetery. In 1869, this platform was built on Regent Street just south of Central Station and serviced funeral trains bound not just for Rookwood Cemetery but also Sandgate Cemetery in Newcastle and Warrenora General Cemetery in Sutherland. In 1948 the line was closed with all four stations in Rookwood Cemetery dismantled. One of those stations was transported to Canberra and rebuilt as the All Saints Church in 1958. Mortuary Station remains and can be seen from most trains approaching the city on the left-hand side before they reach Central Station. Petersham Station on Sydney's T2 Inner West Line has two disused elements. The first one, found on the northern side of the tracks along Terminus Street, is this first-class platform. It was the only first-class station built in Sydney during the 19th century and was built in 1885 after the original Petersham station was demolished from its original location up on the northern side and rebuilt here as a current island platform. The second element is on the southern side of the station and is this former turnback siding where trains would terminate, turn around and return their journey towards the city. Today it is used as a training facility containing a train on its own set of tracks and a bus. The T1 Northern Line crosses the Parramatta River here between Rhodes and Meadowbank stations and originally did so on this, the Meadowbank Bridge, which was built in 1886. By 1980, it had been replaced by the adjacent John Whitten Bridge, which carried two tracks but had the potential to be expanded to four. The John Whitten Bridge is named after John Whitten, who was the designer of the original Meadowbank Bridge. In fact, you can still see some evidence of the original tracks just down here, crossing on the Meadowbank Bridge itself. By the year 2000, the Meadowbank Bridge had been refurbished and reopened, and now carries pedestrians and bike riders. The Royal National Park Line opened in 1886 and continued to operate until 1991. By 1993, it reopened as part of this Sydney's Tramway Museum. The Royal National Park line ran from Loftus to the Royal National Park station located here which is the terminus of the tram trips from the Sydney Tramway Museum. 